Hi, welcome to another episode of My Favorite Awful. We're back here at Germano Studios, the Hit Factory in New York, and someone is letting me in. No, nope. oh, someone is letting me in. Hello, hi. Kenta, the amazing engineer. Let's go to some of this. I am so ready. Take three. Atarashi dare ka no tame ni Watashi nato omoi dasanai de Koe ni sae mo naranakata ano hito koto Kisetsu wa hakondeku toki no kanata Roku gatsu wa aoku kemu ute Nani mo kamo Nijima sete iru Ame no station Aeru kigashite Ikutsu hito kage miyoku tadaro Kiri fukai machi no tori o kasume tobu tsubame ga suki o kokoro shibaru mono o sutete kakete yukitai. Natsukashi Ute no naka Imasuku ni mo Roku gatsu wa Aoku kemu ute Nani mo kamo Nijima sete iru Ame no station Aeru kigashite Ikutsu hito kage miyoku tataro Ame no station Aeru kigashite Ikutsu hito kage miyoku tataro Yeah! All right, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Skylar. Hi. Thank you so much for your performance. Oh, thank you. This is Skylar. Ske I, I'm scared to say your last name. Skelset. It's Shellset. Shellset. Yeah. <sighs> it's a tough Norwegian one. It is Norwegian, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was, like, I was so scared to say it out loud. No, no, it's, um, it's Shellset, Shellset. Yeah. All right, I think I got that. I even wrote, am I saying that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as far as I know, you're from Seattle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and you're probably most well known for being one of the founding members of Fleet Foxes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that I got particularly wrong or any other like info that you would really like people to know about you? No. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, I don't. No, good job. Awesome, awesome. Way All to right. go. I'm from Seattle. That's very accurate. 
so I guess the whole rain theme is really close wow. to home for you. Yeah, perfect. I actually didn't even thought about <laughs> that. Although I, I, when I was practicing, there was a couple of days when it was raining. And I remember like looking out the, the window and just right. being like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> what a perfect inspiration for this performance that I get to. Right. Yeah. It was, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that it's not raining today. Yeah. I was kind of hoping. It's, it's bad out there, though. Yeah, so that's bad. Uh, bad. <laughs> bad is close enough, yeah. yeah. I'll take bad. So speaking of rain, you performed I'm in a Station by mm -hmm. Yumi. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose this song and this artist? There's a funny side to it, and there's like a not, I mean, there's like a more personal side to it, but on a, on a funny side, when I got asked to do this, uh, it was like, you know, ideally you, you would sing a song from our catalog because it's easy to get licensing rights. Um, but so I got the thing, like this, the Spotify playlist that I was sent, it was like literally every song was Japanese. And mm. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's not challenging at all. But I, but uh, we don't have a copy of that record because I was supposed to bring it and I forgot it. But that record, uh, Cobalt Hour, uh, was like just pretend that this is it for right now. Cobalt hour, it's just like CG. Yeah, exactly. It's got a face on it. It's kind of looks. Can we do doesn't that, look, Josh? <laughs> doesn't look terribly dissimilar, but um, it uh, like uh, I don't know. Like if it, if it wasn't for like that record, I probably wouldn't have um, done made back in heaven probably because mm -hmm. uh, the time that like I was listening to this music the most was like really uh, it was. I w it was just like it colored my life so much and I was like I had started kind of writing songs for a record um, like over the years I'd been collecting stuff from just like things that I had put together and I started I was listening to Cobalt Hour like so much that uh, I there, w there was a song the so I have a song called Cobalt on Back in Heaven that is like it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that record mm -hmm. And like, there's some lyrics in it that uh, they very directly like, you know, it's, the song is about that song essentially. It, 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 at the very least, like, evoke the same kind of feeling, because um, it's like the same. It's in the same key and it's the same chords and stuff. But if it wasn't for that song, I probably wouldn't have felt the impetus to like want to put everything together to it. That's so th that song kind of spearheaded the whole record for me. Mm. So, um, so her music has just like it's just influenced mine in, in such a huge way. And like that record, like I I would have. I've always loved that song. If I go to like listen to like, uh, or if I go to like watch like live performances, they usually come from that record. Mm. Um, I mean, she, every every record of hers is, is amazing, but it's uh, that record specifically in that song. I think like when it when I was listening to that record the most was a very good time in my life, and it was like it just really resonated with me. Mm. So I wanted to be able like to be able to have the opportunity to play that song for me was a gift. So. Can you give us a little bio of Yumi? <laughs> Whatever you know off the top of your head is more than enough. I'm yeah. supposed to fill in the information, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be going, oh, really, half the time? No, I don't. I mean, she she's like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like look look at her while I'm doing this because I want to be uh, respectful. Yeah. I'm in no station. There's been this kind of attitude, I think, from the beginning with Alpha of like, Let's make some money here and let's throw it at the music. Yeah. So the, everything is very beautifully recorded. Yeah. It, there's a real attention to quality and detail with less of an emphasis on like, we got to make money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you have a lot of these like fantastic records that didn't necessarily make a lot of money back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. But have stood the test of time and have become much more influential as time goes on. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty clear. Like, if you look at like, even like Hosono's records, if you're just like listening to uh, just like how music was made back then, you know what I mean? Like the YMO records, they're not, you had them in the last interview, but yeah, we can grab some of them. Well, again. no, I mean, but, it, it, but they're like, those guys just got like time to like hang out and like write this cool music and like try new stuff. And it's cool that they were supported through that because, you know, if you release a record like that now, if if if, if, it was, if that record hadn't existed and somebody put it out now, you probably wouldn't get the same response or the same like mm. sort of like appreciation for it. But I think that like it's probably because everybody was like also working together all the time back then, which was cool because it like regardless of who was on what label, they everybody was like making these things. I mean, because I know she had a pen name and she was writing for other people and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like you look at like like her, I know on her records. 
Like, not only did you have, like, yeah, the Tin Pan guys, like, playing backup mm -hmm. on these things, which is incredible, but you also had, like, in the, some of the choirs, like, you had, like, Tatsuro Yamashita or, like... Um, Onuki Taiko. Yeah, like, like, really, like, important people who were just, like, in the choir, and that's, yeah. like... And as like a way to get into music and just like be working, so it just seemed like it was like a really open place where people were just excited to be able to like support these like artists doing the thing that they were doing, which you don't really see very much more these days. There are good labels for sure that mm -hmm. do support the arts, but it's just it definitely seems like maybe people are a lot less focused on that and more kind of about just like people doing something very specific because right and like and delivering that specific thing rather than like the artist having the chance to kind of like change whatever the direction is that they're going to go right because even her records like i feel like they're all pretty different i mean they, mm -hmm. they have a kind of a singer songwriter thing but they all definitely feel um like complete in their entirety mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that that record like it, it's just like every single track on it belongs on that record oh yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah. but it's not the same as this record by any means you right. know, it's like I totally mean, like, different even aesthetically like this photo feels very much like this era, yeah. and that photo is, you know, it, it's almost like a different personality. Yeah, but it, which is crazy, though, because it is only a, a couple years, and it is interesting. Two it's just years? an observer, like, watching her specifically. It is amazing to see her kind of find her identity as, like, a singer. Because, mm. like, in, in that stuff, she's so much more demure. Even that picture, she's got that big hat on, you know, right, and it's right, like it's right. very, like, kind of classic feeling. But then, like, in here, she's got this beautiful silk dress, and it's like the confidence sitting at the piano. It's just, it's incredible to see her, this little kind of, like, window of time. But, I mean, if you're starting playing music at 13 or 14 years old, it's yeah. like, yeah. I mean, she's, you said earlier how old she was in this, but it's like, I wasn't like that when I was that age. Right. I was like, just trying to figure shit out. Right. Yeah, I mean, and she just had such a clear sort of idea of like what it is that she wanted to be doing. Yeah, I think it's 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 even more interesting when you like also remember like these four albums. She was eighteen to twenty two, and so you're literally seeing someone come of age and find their identity not just musically, but as a human being mm -hmm. recorded onto vinyl forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally, and it's uh, that's the impressive thing about having. I feel like records that are. I mean, because I you know. I understand some of the Japanese, but like a, a lot of times I've had to like look up like um, sort of like user based sort of translations of these songs um, right. or tried to like translate them myself. And it, it's, uh, they're all just so like kind of touching. Like they all have, you know, they're all about something very specific. They're all trying to like say something. They're all trying to like encapsulate a feeling, mm -mm -mm. which is tough to do at that young of an age, I feel like, because you don't really have tons of like experience with it so oh, yeah. so to be able to do that is like really impressive I feel that again it just comes down to like the earnestness of her music I think where it's just like she feels like she's writing something very honest which is crazy to me because like I don't again like I don't understand all the lyrics to this stuff but it just mm -hmm. evokes this feeling of like this is honest right you know which is like which is a really nice feeling to come across in music totally like I, I mean, not to draw comparisons, but like, it, like these records feel to me like like Marvin Gaye records do, or something. Mm. You know, like just very honest records about who that person is and like what it is that they're trying to do in music and what they're trying to find through it. But mm. that's heavy to say. But yeah. <laughs> but I but mean, it the her records really have like they've been with me for like a long time. Right. I was thinking about this not to take over your interview, but I was thinking about this the other day when I was like, when was the first time I ever heard her and I was like because I had a I had in 2015 I had all these friends and we were like passing records around a lot and a lot of them were these records and um, uh, we were just like really really into this stuff and it was a it was a great time and it was like a lot of like you know finishing a show and then like getting on the bus and like listening to these things or like you know coming across a record and being like oh I know who would love this record I'm gonna send this record to this person mm -hmm. but I, I mean, it must have been Kiki's delivery service because of uh, Rouge No Dengon right. from the record I didn't bring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day, like, just, like, how how long it's been with me. Mm. And it has. It wasn't, it didn't, like, really kind of, I, I got really into it in, like, 2014, 2015, mm. 16 era. Um, and for for a long time, and I still do, I still love it too. But that was like, there was like a four year window of time where I was like listening to basically only her music, 
and Hosono's music. That's wild. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a, it was a great time. It was every memory I have associated with it was like it's really wonderful. But um, yeah, I just I just love her stuff so much. It's great. Awesome. Yeah. I did want to like uh, quickly just go over a couple of like uh, some of her earlier bio stuff. Yeah. Um, so she, uh, y you touched on her her starting music very young. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if she was actually in the studio at fourteen fifteen. Really? But she was definitely starting to already write a bunch of the songs oh. that would end up on her first record. I guess what I had read was that she was like playing piano on records specifically. I think so. The first so record that, that she she played piano on, uh, I'm not going to name because it was part of my quiz. <laughs> <laughs> but uh -oh. I, I, I don't <laughs> think so. That we got that one wrong then at this point. I mean, I don't know. She was, she was young. She, yeah, she was, she I mean, was young. She it's was... She, I, is it actually 15? I don't know. Either way, very... I mean, when I was that age, I, like I said before, I was, like, doing nothing. I mean, so whatever whatever three years window yeah. it is. I mean, it's incredible. She was in high school. So yeah. I think that's, that's impressive enough, <laughs> just that alone. I, I, I read this thing about her, uh, like, <clears throat> because... Yeah, like, when I was that young, I was, like, I was just hanging out at home, you know what I mean? I was hanging out with, like, Robin and stuff, and we would just do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I read this thing where she was hanging out at this restaurant called Chianti. It was, like, a, a newly opened restaurant in Japan called Chianti, and it was, like, all the cool people hung out there. We can talk about Chianti forever. Really? Forever. I had never it heard of it exists. before, but I but th I was reading the thing and it was like oh like like authors like Yukio Mishima used to hang out there and I was like what like so there's a there's a there's a place where those two people converge and that that blew my mind when I read that I I wish we had like a, an, an extra hour to like go through Chianti because Chianti is fascinating and the history of Chianti is also very very closely re related to Alpha yeah yeah to the point that you can say no Chianti no Alpha Chianti is its own beast yeah it's, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. The amount of people that were hanging out there, and even just like like foreign celebrities too. I know Salvador Dali would hang out there. Frank mm -hmm. Sinatra would hang out mm -hmm. there. Shirley MacLaine would hang out there. Mm -hmm. um, and these people also helped open these doors for these yeah. Japanese creatives to get into these other places. Yeah, yeah. Which is what it, kind of what it seemed like was happening back then, which is like why it's cool that it was like a hang. Yeah. You know, like I, I feel like sometimes music doesn't necessarily feel like that all the time these days. And it, um, not to be too like y Yumi, but uh, to go back to those days, <laughs> those wonderful days of the past, <laughs> where everybody's hanging out and having a good time. Mm. It just it seems like kind of an impossibility now. So like when you hear things like about places like that, you're like, right. man, the good old days. Right. But I mean, uh, you know, music is still cool and incredible. Of course. It's not just a, a, being obsessed with throwback stuff is kind of a waste of time. But right. This stuff clearly stands the test of time, and it's it's cool that it had such a cool, supportive culture and kind of scene around it at the time. Mm -mm. Is that place still open? It is. Wow. It is. Um, we actually we 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 got to film something there. You did? Uh, yeah. Uh, not for this program, uh, but oh. for another program that we're hoping to eventually have everything put together. Oh, cool. For it. So more information eventually on that. Cool, yeah. Chianti. <laughs> yeah, but hey, if you're ever in Japan and we're in Japan, we'll take you. Oh my we'll, God, we'll, we'll, it, it'll be a lot of fun. Cool. Um, I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> what? I'm gonna hold you to that. Oh no, of course. It's, cool. It's, it's 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 yeah it's yeah it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of it's just cool to to know that all those people were yeah. hanging out there when you're totally in that space. yeah. Um, I guess just a little bit more about like her initially getting into Alpha. Mm. She was kind of, for lack of a better word, a groupie for oh. uh, this band called The Fingers, um, who were a, you know, Group Sounds? No. Group Sounds is like a weird, no, weird is probably not the best word <laughs> to use right now. Group Sounds is a genre of Japanese rock music influenced heavily by like the British invasion and whatnot. Uh -huh. uh, it's essentially... like. It, who, like what? Like, like the tigers, oh, okay, the spiders, yeah, 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 yeah. the fingers. I know the tigers, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like this manufactured Beatles kind of yeah, yeah, vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where the, it's, 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 yeah, like it's idols, but idols like in like the yeah, yeah. Beatles or like no, the No, I'm, I'm a big like Kenji Sawada fan. Okay. 
So I, I know who you're talking about. That vibe is, is very cool to me. Right. Yeah. Um, I'd be a groupie too, actually, probably. Yeah. A tiger's groupie. So she, she was, so uh, Kaish, Kat, yeah, Kaish Katsumi is from Tigers. Mm. Um, but she wrote songs, f she wrote a song for him, right? Yeah. Uh, like his first hit, solo hit. I th Something? think, I, th I think, I'm not sure if it was his first solo hit, it was definitely one of his earlier solo hits. Um, Aiwa Totsuzenyi. Uh, suddenly in love, or uh -huh. something, something. I think. I think. I wasn't sure if it's, it's his first hit, but it's definitely one of his first hits. Cool. I think it was on his second album. Um, so that was the album that he recorded after recording the one in Paris. Uh -huh. It would be really embarrassing if I'm having this completely <laughs> wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right. No, it's cool. Kaish Katsumi is Tigers, right? Yeah. 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 Kaish Katsumi is Tigers. <laughs> so I'm just a Sawada. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a Julie. I'm a Julie fan. Right. Um, so she's a groupie for Fingers. She's hanging around the Fingers. Uh, incidentally, the drummer for the Fingers is the older brother of Yukiro Takahashi. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, so she wow. had been to Takahashi's place as like a high schooler. She like knew all these. She was friends with like all the the group sounds people from uh, like the clubs and whatnot, uh -huh. and being a groupie. Uh -huh. uh, and she had gotten really close to Shi Yuchen, who was. Uh, oh, a member right, of right. The I read this this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and he was cast in Hair, yeah, along with I think it was Kash Katsumi, and uh, along with um, also Kosaka Chu. Uh -huh. And that Hair production was brought to Japan also by the the son of the owner of County. Oh wow! And it's at that show that she pitched the demos to Kash oh, Katsumi. Wow. And so, again, like, no Chianti, no yeah, yeah. this either. Such a scene back then. Yeah. I think mean, Chianti, it's like, it's it's almost insane how if you, like, Google enough things mm. from that era in Tokyo, you're going to find that they were at Chianti. Because <laughs> there's almost no way that they could do that without having met one of the people that are at Chianti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go. Yeah, it's wild. Um... I mean, I feel, I feel like we've talked enough a little bit about about Yumi herself. I sure. did want to quickly kind of go over. I know, I know that you've been listening to the songs for a long time, and, mm. and um, uh, because of that, I don't know if there's anything that you might have discovered new. But but from this experience of like arranging it for Alpha specifically, I guess with the Japanese audience in mind, was there anything that like you discovered new about the song that you might not have noticed before or just something that really stood out to you that you were aware of but, but like really stood out to you even more? About that song specifically? About the song specifically, yeah. <sighs> Through your experience of performing it for us today. Uh, I mean, I, I can tell you that I've listened to it so many times <laughs> to get ready for this mm -hmm. that uh, I know like every single bass note on it. <laughs> like I know every drum hit just because I wanted to get so ready for it, which is like a new kind of way to experience a track sometimes when you're listening to it. Right. Um, I don't. I don't know if I learned anything new, but I. I. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but the arrangement is like of what I just did is is like slightly different because there's no guitar solos or anything like that. Right. So it was interesting, like thinking about the song as a song and not so much about like because a lot of times when I listen to these records, I, I do listen to them as like. Oh, you get to hear Hassan on the bass, or you get to hear like Sh Shigeru Suzuki on the guitar. It's totally. like it's like a cool opportunity to be able to hear these people. Um, but I, it was the first time I'd ever had to like deconstruct it and think about it as like a song, right? Rather than like an experience of listening to it. Like I, I you know, I just like took I learned it by listening to it and just played it. But it's uh, sometimes that's like kind of the best way to sort of. Uh, internalize a track is just to, to be able to have like to know every single change of it you know what I mean right. it, it does take on like a different sort of feeling to you to me at least now when I'm listening to it I'm like okay this is where she goes down an octave in her melody or whatever mm. it, which is interesting to listen to as songs but in terms of like how it makes me feel how did I learn anything like emotionally from it probably not but that's because this music is like like I said like when I was really listening to this music a lot it was like just like a very good time in my life where it was like so I, all, all the associations associations I already have with it would be hard to trump right um, sorry for saying the word trump but uh, it would be hard to beat uh, so that yeah I, I've, I've, I've kind of maintained like a, a 
an importance and an idea of like what these songs mean to me over the years that I feel like would be hard to shake. But it is interesting right. to listen to them in like a sort of more technical way mm. to have to perform them. And I would actually like to, to do more. It was actually, a, it's the, uh, the opportunity to be able to do this was great for me because it's something that I've always wanted to do anyways. Like to, to record one of her songs and perform it. Mm -hmm. I've thought about doing it on like a record and stuff, but that seems complicated. So I've stayed away from it. But now I, I have a perfect excuse to do it. So yeah. So it's, yeah, it's good. I mean, I, now I've internalized that feeling about it. Mm -hmm. This interview has given me an experience to remember <laughs> to cherish for the rest of my life. Yay! <laughs> I was trying to, I was just fiddling on my phone trying to play the song through the speakers, but yeah. I realized my Bluetooth <laughs> disconnected. And I feel like, I mean, I'll sing it for you right now. <laughs> you there we go. No. Second performance. <laughs> no. I, I did I did notice obviously that I, I, I really I was interested in, in knowing like how influenced you were by that version versus or you know, that version. Pretending oh, yeah, that's pretend the right record. Yeah, sorry for um, and like the hi fi stat version of the song. Uh, uh that that's an interesting version. Sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, it's interesting because it in like a kind of boring technical way that like the th one of the things about her version of it is, is it the meter changes sometimes mm -hmm. uh, and this one is like a bit more straightforward but it's um, this is a great version I mean uh, everything that they do it's just great it's just like this shit this stuff is just like pretty music you know right. what I mean and it's like and it's done well and it it serves the music that it's performing like in a really beautiful way and like I don't think that I mean I love her version of the song because it's her and it's her voice. Mm -hmm. But I mean, their version is incredible. It's like who wouldn't want to listen to that? You know, right. it's like it's cool chords. They're easy going. It's like it's just it's a good. It's great. So it, it, which is a testament to like a good song, I think, too, is if it, if it can exist in different forms. Right. And not just like the way it was recorded. So I feel like we need to start a section that's like what 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 to you makes a song good? Just oh. because like that, I, I know that that Ray touched on that mm. on, on her one um, and I know that you said that you'd seen that and I know Ginger Root also like unprompted went into like yeah I totally think this is what makes a good song because blah mm. blah blah and so I'm, I'm, I feel like yeah, one I, of the questions is just what what do you think makes a song good? Uh, if you're asking me that now I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea because I think a lot of times, like with most of the stuff, it's like kind of a perfect storm. You know, it's like mm -hmm. what the person was going through, where they recorded at, who they were recording with. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just so many things to it. Like, you you could have your, yourself set up in like the most beautiful studio in the world, mm -hmm. and have every instrument at your disposal and, and make like the worst record of all time. Right. I mean, it's so a lot of it to me is just like, does it feel earnest? You know, does it feel like is it is it feel like something that somebody's like trying to say something? And I think even in terms of like sometimes songs are just cool because they sound cool. Mm. And that but that in itself is like comes from so much of like searching for something, like finding something. You know what I mean? It's right. not like it's never about like, oh, this is the right thing to do. So mm. we're gonna do this and add this to it. Mm. Um but you know, you see that a lot with like YMO. Like that that's you don't like wake up thinking like, oh, this is how I want this music to sound. Right. You know what I mean? It's like who could you know mm -hmm. you you get into the studio and you're like oh, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around with this and search through like what the material we have here is mm -hmm. and make whatever it is you know what I mean but like Rye Dean you know what I mean that could have that song I love that song because the version of that song is incredible mm -hmm. and but I mean and also subsequently like the the later versions that they did of those songs um, that has has YMO stuff you know stuff it's like the 2000s they did a commercial for uh kieran and it's like they did a new they used a new version of writing it's like did they yeah huh. you pulled your phone can i pull my phone out for a second yeah, yeah absolutely there's a there's a version it's like uh it's like when it's like super hi-fi it's like uh from it's this one rest it's got it's a split thing rescue what? You ever seen this? No. Oh, it's like the best version of, of, I mean, best is subjective, but like, when they're all like, at some point they're like cavemen. Exactly. And then what? like. What? Really I've watched it so many times because at the very, the, I have a friend who's going to absolutely love this if this makes it to the interview, but there's this, there's, 
there's a shot of Sakamoto drinking a beer at the end of it that is like the most satisfying looking person I've ever seen in my life. Like it's like if you've ever drank a beer, this is how you want it to feel. Right. And every time like I send this video to this friend of mine all the time to be like, let's do this. Mm. Just for this like two second clip of Sakamoto like drinking this beer and be like, ah. But I've listened to that version of writing so many times. But like that's a it's a it's a cool song. Oh. But like if I went out there and tried to play Ride on acoustic guitar and like sang it to right, you, like, right, you'd right. be like, this is stupid. Right. Um, but it, again, it's like, it just comes down to like, where was it recorded? Like what was going on in this person's life? What's, mm. what's the feeling that's being compelled here? Who, like who played on it? Who, you know, there's so many things to it mm. that make like what a good song is. I feel like it's just such a subjective thing. Totally. And I don't know why the collective consciousness decides what is popular and what is not, but mm. like I, it's just, it's subjective but like I'm sure like Ginger Root probably if you had to ask them what their favorite YMO song would probably be way different than what mine is probably you know what I mean yeah. so it's like and that's cool that's really cool that that mm -hmm. that everybody can have a different sort of idea of what that is and it's cool especially with this kind of music and now that y'all are like repressing these records and like releasing these um, you know I know that you've been putting out these uh, Jun Togawa music videos and stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like for people to be able to it's just such a dense catalog of yeah. so much stuff that goes from like one spectrum of music all the way to the other yeah. in such an elegant way that you can really kind of find something that you like about it and then find some sort of relatability almost to all the other releases too because there is some sort of inherent thread to everything about it and it's not just that it's Japanese it's like there's something about it that it's like there's a reason all these people congregated together, right? And and there's a reason that everybody's playing on each other's records and right. all this stuff. So, it's a really it's, it's a it's a beautiful thing that it's hard it's hard to come across these days. But I think there's one thing to be said about it being a musician's label. Like yeah, everyone that yeah, was yeah. involved in the founding of it also had experience in producing or writing yeah. or composing or performing. Totally. And I'm sure that definitely had an effect. Yeah, that's really cool. Shall we move on to some trivia questions? Oh my god. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my all. god. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I actually thought about bringing notes though. I thought about it like just having them here being like, well, here's the thing. I got I got to start telling people straight up like it's just supposed to be what you know off the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have like cliff notes like written on my hand. Here. Right, right. She lives in Setagaya. Right. <laughs> um okay. Uh so we, we will give you a score. We'll give you a score. Okay, I'm, I'm prepared to get a zero, so. Okay, well, hopefully it's like a big, like, A+. plus. Yeah, hopefully. Not a poop sign emoji. That would, yeah, that would be disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when is Yumin's birthday? Oh, my God. I, I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> Probably not off the top of my head. Thanks for asking, man, because <laughs> I, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, if I had to guess, let me, let me try to guess. Sure. I would guess it's in November. I don't know to say if that's close. No, or I'd far. say I'd say I'd say it's in spring. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, tell me though. I'm I'm dying to know. January. Oh, January so 19th. far. January nineteenth. So just about a month ago. Shoot. Oh, if we would have we got this this thing got rescheduled, but if it hadn't been, it would have been on her birthday. Was it originally the nineteenth? It was the nineteenth or the twentieth, right? It could have been on her birthday. In January, was it? Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. Hey! That's glad... <laughs> Something happened. Glad someone caught that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. What <laughs> was... What was Yumin's first single? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She was so young and she has so many songs. And I know that she didn't actually release a record until after the first single mm -hmm. was released. Mm -hmm. But I believe that that first single is on a record. I believe so. Is Was it, it not re-released on this record? No? That, that's a, that had a different vibe. That was Ponta, Murakami Shuichi produced, right? I don't think it was... No, it was Kamayatsu. Ah, Kamayatsu, Kamayatsu. Kamayatsu. I, know there's, I know there's like one of her singles did get released uh, back on something, but it's not this. Because, yeah, <laughs> people. Uh, she. I don't. I don't know if she particularly likes this one. Does she? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> That's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's entitled to her opinion. I think it's valid. I think, I think it's a great record, and I, I don't know why, sh- why any. It's great. I think it's cool. It's a cool record. It's got those 3D glasses on it. That's that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, apparently, her first single is um, "Hinge You Ain't Night," which I don't know if it, it's a. Reply, I don't. I, 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 I don't yeah. yeah, I don't need a response. And the B side was "Sorato Yumi no Kagayaki ni Mukete." Towards the shining sun and sea. Okay. Um, I got Mukete out of that. That's that's as far as I understand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, her her vocals have vibrato on it. Which in the of, like a after effect? Single? No, I don't. Like, it's not an. A- I don't think that that's really possible at that point. What do you mean they have vibrato on them? Like, 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 so, like somebody put like an effect on them? No, like just like because I, I don't think she usually sings with much vibrato. I think she does. Why am I losing like, my mind? Like, like the first record, the guy, um, Arigato, mm-hmm. the director. Mm-hmm. I think she was trying to meet the hit the pitch. So it's pitch corrected? No. 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 Yeah. Right. Oh. She's trying to swing it up to it or something? Yeah. So yeah. Because her, her songs are difficult to sing. Oh. Yeah. And I know. That's why, <laughs> <laughs> that's why it took a year to record the first album. Oh. Uh, she, she, she was just like. Because like he was in, like in consistent. Consistent. He, was, he insisted. Insistent, yeah. Um, like you know, changing her vocal style. Yeah, uh-huh. but she definitely has like she sings with vibrato like on this. Mm. Right. I think she changed like, just like on, on the first album she was like very trying hard. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Like she was trying to sing with vibrato. Yeah. 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 Yeah radio shows on YouTube mm. that people have uploaded and there's, there's really cute pictures of her like at the shows or whatever in these black and white photos but she yeah she's got a real serious vibrato sometimes when she's singing stuff uh, I guess that's true but, I, but it's, why, a, it's just an affectation when you're singing and it's, it can yeah. be yeah I don't know why I kind of have an image of her singing more straight than with like much I mean not not that she can't use it but more like just my image of yeah a lot of her her music her music is a lot more kind of a straight sound yeah, yeah. than vibrato. But she has I mean her she sounds like a bird. It's like it's crazy. Her voice is so like so uh, sonorously. It's just like it's such a tone. Mm. When it, that so, I mean I feel I feel what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, am I am I going crazy? No 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 okay. no, no no. But I think <laughs> it, I think that it's maybe it was like something that she had to kind of learn to sort of smooth right. out or something because some people do sing with more or less but totally yeah but no I did not know the name of the first single and I am scoring a, just a zero right now I would have too cool <laughs> <laughs> I'm not alone I think I think this one this one's significantly easier Uh-oh. so there's that I, well, I got the birthday wrong it seems like that's a pretty easy one by the but way it's, but it's, it's memorizing yeah but it's Rihanna's birthday today and I know that just like already Is just it sitting here birthday yeah today? so I should know that that's not cool <sighs> of me Happy birthday, Rihanna. <laughs> Anyways, so we're, we're here to uh, talk about Yuming. Right, yeah. Yeah, more more Yuming questions. Enough people know Rihanna. <laughs> um, what are her four albums under Alpha? These two, this one, <laughs> and Cobalt Hour. Does it, does it count without... I, 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 you got to say the names. Oh, sorry. Mislam. Yeah. The 14th Moon. Hikoki Guma. And Cobalt Hour. There we go. I got it. Yeah. I, it's one point. That's one point. I could give you four for that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one. You could give me three because I forgot to bring the other copy. There you go. There you go. Because it would have looked so nice as a set. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> 2022. Um, what was her first credit on an album as a musician? That's. I mean, that's. A th- I'm album. gonna. I'm gonna guess that it was singing. Piano playing. Yes. Okay, it was piano playing. Uh, do I know what it was though? No. If you if you can name the album, I'll, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the song. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Not I, super yeah. Easy. <laughs> I, I yeah. I don't. I don't think I could answer it. Her first uh, credit as a musician is playing piano on Chu Kosaka's Arigato album. Ooh. 
That's a good credit to have. Yep. That's cool. That's a fantastic I, like, credit. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of people get to have such a cool credit for their first one, yeah? Yeah. Shoot, I don't know anything. I, all I know is the music. I'm just here, I'm here to listen to it. I mean, to <laughs> be honest, that's what's most important. Yeah. I would love to read her biography because I know she has an autobiography. Mm. But I, has it been translated to English? Probably not, but I would have to look into that. Yeah. I would like to read it, though. I'll, I'll, I'll let her know that she has to oh make sure it comes out in English because Skylar wants to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, just, it seems fascinating. This whole era of, of everybody just seems... They were just on something. I don't know what yeah. they were doing, but so much stuff came out yeah. all the time. It's, it's quite insane. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to read it. I'll give you two more questions. Good luck. For it. Yeah, all good right. luck. I don't, I don't mind failing. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what is her the, the pen name that she would use sometimes when writing for other artists? Oh, it's uh, based on Greta Garbo. It is. It's uh, Kudeha uh, Karuho. Very close. Basically, Kude Takaruho. Okay. I think, unless you were right and I was wrong. No, no. I, kure da, kure, it's Kude Takaruho. Yeah. Okay. But it was like a Greta Garbo exactly, yeah. play. Yeah, that's really funny. But I, I kind of got that. Yeah. That was like a half point. Yeah. Well, since we're there, I might actually just throw, throw, throw another half for you to pick up the other half of that. Okay. What was um, Hosono's uh, oh, pen name? Oh, shoot. I did know this, and now... For some reason, all I can think of is Prince's pen name. I can't get it out of my head because I, I know this. I don't know. I'm on the spot. I can't remember it. I'm sorry. Well, you know what? I'll, but do you I'll, want to know I'll Prince's though? Yes, I do. Can I tell you Prince's? Yeah, yeah. Alexander Nevermind. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? It is. God. <laughs> so awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that question open till the end, just okay. because I feel like when maybe, your mind maybe wanders, come back. It yeah, might, yeah, yeah. you know. You think my mind my wand, my mind is wandering in this interview? <laughs> well, wanders <laughs> away from that specific thing that yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it a, give it Meanders. some air. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> how many uh, how many of Yuming's songs oh. during her time at Alpha include "Rain" in the title? <laughs> oh, oh. So just from these four albums. <sighs> Can I look at this one to just get a hint? Sure. Can I just like just a gauge? Like if I had to be like. Because then we could at least like rule something out, right? Okay. So we've got one on this. So one. Uh, I'm going to say, so four records. There's got to be at least one a record, right? Let's say, I'm going to say six. A little over. It's five. Four. Four. <laughs> one per album. One per album. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Maybe that is why you connect with her so much. Because the rain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> you just remind me of rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, rain clearly means something to her. Yeah. And I, 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 I assume rain means something more to people from Seattle than, than most places in Not America. generally positive, but, but yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Um, cool. I think, I think that's okay. for Actually, you know what? I'm gonna th so I forgot mm. I was going to add an extra trivia question the time before this and I forgot to throw it in because it has it's kind of less to do with the specific album and more to do with Alpha and this studio okay oh shoot <laughs> I like, know what you're going to ask me and I, I, I actually was trying to think of it this morning and uh -huh. I was like I can't remember and I actually like went on Google and I was like trying to figure out the answer because I knew it was going to come up in the interview <laughs> and I don't know the answer to what you're going to ask me but should I just say the answer then and not yeah, even say yeah, the question? Yeah, 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 let's just jump ahead. All right, well, let's, let's, let's hope that people figure out the question on their own then. Mm. So you get a point if, if, you ask, if, if, if you ask the question in the comments. How's that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Who gets a point? The person that's watching. <laughs> <laughs> a home point. Exactly. Uh, the real points. Yeah. Uh, the answer is Sun Sun by Cassiopeia. Okay. Yeah. I had no answer for you. It, it would have been... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was recorded by, um, I can never remember his name, a guy who worked with uh, David Bowie a lot in the 80s. Uh, so uh, many people. He, he like, like, like produced a bunch of his stuff in the 80s. Like, like what record? I can't remember off the top of my head. Son, Just a bunch son. of people who work in the music industry who don't have the answer. 
<laughs> I mean, who does? Let's, let's be honest here. <laughs> if, any, if, if you're a starting musician and someone tells you they know what they're doing, run. Yeah, nobody knows. Run. Seriously. I, yeah. You don't really want to know what you're doing, honestly. I think, actually, because if, if you know what you're doing, you are going to misstep. Right. Because if you are trying to step a specific way in your process, you will misstep. Yeah. Trust us. It wasn't until later that Yumi's four <laughs> records <laughs> all were in the charts. That is a very good point. All right, I give up. I can't find it. I can't. That's so annoying. That's I, okay. I, I need to get be better at names, clearly. Oh, no. Carlos Alomar. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A couple final questions for you. Yeah, I'm here. Besides Yumi, who are your favorite alpha artists slash which uh, artists or songs or music on alpha are you most influenced by? Um, well, I mean, because it's so expansive, it's easy to kind of listen to a lot of their Alpha Music's records as like uh, a theme in a lot of ways, just because it's mm -hmm. like it's age, at least for me, because it's like aged a certain way. Like, I, there are certain things that I associate. Like, when I get into her stuff, inherently I'm going to be listening to Hosono's stuff as well because I know that he played on this record. So mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, he is amazing at the bass. I would like to hear more of it. Let's listen to his other stuff. Whatever. Um, but I actually, I was thinking about, so first was sort of like, when did I hear her first? And no, not realizing even then in Kiki's delivery service that it was her. I was listening mm -hmm. to that soundtrack in high school and being like, this is a cool soundtrack from a Japanese movie. This is cool to me. And that was like enough for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember when I was uh, living in Capitol Hill in Seattle, I used to go to this bar all the time called... Uh, it doesn't matter. It's called the Redwood. Uh, it's not there anymore. But, uh, you know, when you're young and you're, like, getting into music, you're meeting a lot of other musicians, and mm -hmm. it's really exciting to, like, talk about music mm -hmm. because everybody knows something, mm -hmm. you know, or at least they want to act like they know, seem like they know something. Mm -hmm. So everybody's always, like, kind of throwing out recommendations, like, oh, you know, you got to check out this, you got to check out this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had played the shows with this band, and I saw, ran to the drummer there, and he was the person who gave me my first copy of Solid State Survivor, which, so, to me, like, inherently, like, that was like a moment where it was like, mm. boom, mm -hmm. you know, everything all of a sudden kind of changed. Right. So that stuff is huge for me. Um, I, YMO is like a really amazing band again because, again, it shows, I mean, I just, we just played a song that was released in 2000, what was it, seven, I said, that Rydeen version. Right, right. That has maintained relevance regardless of how much time they've taken away or whatever. It's so, it's so like kind of part of the music that comes out of Japan. Mm -hmm. Every you can't say like a band comes out of Japan that doesn't have some sort of influence from it. That could be wrong to say, but they've been so huge everywhere. I mean, even I from just like Sakamoto's like involvement with like ring or like like watch uh, tones. Like he used to write like mm -hmm. music for like Casio or whatever. Right, right, right. I mean, just like in day to day life, you know. Um, but so definitely Yellow Magic Orchestra and all all their subsequent things. Um, Jun Togawa again. Jun Togawa is like one of my She's always like somebody I fall back on where I'm like, oh, like uh, this, uh, I'm like, if I'm like frustrated about something, I'll put on like her cover of like All Tomorrow's Parties or something like mm. that and just be like, this is what I want my music to sound like from now on. Just do this. And it never ends up sounding like that, but it's always a good sort of like palette mm. refresher or something like that. Mm -mm -mm. So I'd probably say you mean YMO and her, probably. Interesting. Yeah, I, they're just, everybody's so cool in those bands. Everybody right. who's doing all this stuff is so cool. Right. Yeah. I so agree. <laughs> I mean, I'm so, it's, it's so cool to see, like, when Light in the Attic did all that um, mm -hmm. Hosono stuff and all that, they did, a, I think they did a, did they do a couple of Yellow Magic Orchestra records as well? They The first two or something? They, I think they did the first two, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool to see people getting into that stuff, and it, it's like, it's, I don't think that it has been out of vogue over the last decades before than before these releases have come out or anything like that but it's not it wasn't as easily as accessible mm -mm -mm. and I think it's it's so cool now that it's like they've done such a good job with that stuff to get people kind of hip to like what was happening from like you know 70 to like 85 or whatever however long you want to go into it with your listening but right. everybody was just so cool back then and it yeah. seemed like they were really believing in music and believing in like that they wanted to do something that was very very cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which uh, it, which I think is it, it's important to remember that like you want to do something that is 
something important. You know what I mean? It's not just about like, oh, how many people can I get to listen to this as fast as I can? Mm-hmm. Or like, how do I get this on a commercial or whatever? It's like, it's about like, I mean, especially with her, because she had this, that whole thing where she was like, I'm not going to release like a comp right. or singles for decades. Right. I mean, that's, that to me is like, the, that, that's an impressive thing to do. If somebody came up to me and was like, hey, do you want to release like a greatest hits of your records? I'd be like, of course, because nobody listens to my music. Right. <laughs> so like, of course, I would love to, whatever the many opportunities for releases. But, and I know that she was obviously in a place of like privilege to be able to be like, I had success. She, she could, or speaking for her, she was like, I, had, I have this success. I don't need to be doing comps or like re-releases or whatever. But I think it's still a cool testament just to be like, no, I'm just gonna focus on records. Like I'm gonna make records. And that to me is like, that to me is like a clear sign that this person clearly cares most, first and foremost about the music, which is the only thing that's going to be compelling if, like if you want people to care about it, then right. you have to care about it too. Right. So it's all so inspiring and it's just like, it's a great, uh, spectrum of music for to get into amazing <laughs> <laughs> um what are some of your other influences other than alpha as an artist both in japan and outside of japan oh just in general i mean yeah, some of your biggest influences I'm trying to think about what, I, what i've been listening to lately aside from uh ame no station right <laughs> on repeat a million times uh I don't know. I try to listen to as much stuff as I can, uh, kind of all the time. I, I listen. I've been listening to a lot of Marvin Gaye lately, uh-huh. um, and uh, I love. Um, I actually did an interview recently about uh, Mersbo, so that's like another person I always kind of fall back on. Um, in terms of Japan, I know this is like kind of divisive, but a lot of I find a lot of inspiration from like Mishima's books. Mm. Like I'm a big Mishima fan, which I know is like, it's a complicated conversation considering like sort of who he was in Japan's history. Right. Um, and I totally observe that and respect that. But I, there's something about his prose that I feel like is like unparalleled. I don't. Right. I feel like I've read passages in his books that have like, like kind of changed me as a person just like by reading one page, mm. uh, which is humongous. But. Yeah, I, I don't know. Marvin Gaye, I guess, is the only real answer I have outside of Japan. Okay. Uh, but I try to listen to as much stuff. I wish I could think of like what I've been listening to. I've been working on music so much lately that it's been really... I've only basically been listening to the music that I've been working on. Right, right, right. Which is fun, but it's also... Um, yeah. It's tough. I've been trying to do like stuff that I'm not comfortable with. Mm. So like uh, like maybe be it play like an instrument that I'm not super comfortable with or, or whatever. Um, and so sometimes that will... Uh, manifest in me sort of like finding records or something that I li- that focus primarily on those things mm-hmm. like whatever it is that I'm trying to sort of achieve in my music mm-hmm. so I don't know it's kind of scattered I wish I had a better answer for you no no but I, I, I mean I, I can't tell you how much I listen to Yellow Magic Orchestra right like I really it's like it's a daily thing um, mm. so I, it just colors everything that I do right <laughs> yeah the soundtrack to your life yeah basically i mean e- i even like have like sakamoto did like in the, I, I don't remember when exactly it was like 2000s at some point he designed like the the ringtone set for this like nokia phone in mm-hmm. japan mm-hmm. but like i even have it as like the ringtone on my iphone now really like i made them <laughs> <gasps> like so it's just it's kind of kind of all the uh, constantly around me um that's awesome yeah I, the, everything everything Alpha ever released is cool to me, yeah. so it's 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 hard to like kind of stay away from it honestly. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely hear that. Yeah. Like it's it's I think the 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 I don't know what the word is, I want to say diggability. That's mm. not a word, obviously, but you know, like yeah, yeah, it just you keep going and you, yeah, it yeah. never ends. Yeah, especially if you're like a like a record collector too, like somebody who cares about like right. certain pressings and stuff. Like you, I mean, you could go to Japan and go to like. Um, Disc Union or something like that, Best and literally on. find like f- like five perfect copies of this, all different pressings, all different releases. Like it's there's so many things. Yeah, you're right. Just like, to uncover, right? And also like from what we were saying before is like once you get into this too, Alpha as like an anchor as a hub sort of to, like to Japanese music. Just considering like when pop music was kind of becoming a thing there in, in such a big way, mm. like they just everybody 
was playing on everybody's yeah. thing. So it's like you listen to one of these things and all of a sudden you're listening to some other artist that was like friends with this person or something right, like that. Right, so right, right. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's a huge web. Yeah. And my final question. <laughs> mm. Is this, uh, am I going to get a point for this one? You, uh, Is this you trivia? Want, do you want a point? I'll take a point. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll give you a point. If I'll, I get I'll it give right. you an extra half point. Oh my God. What if I get it wrong? I don't, I don't, uh, you decide if it's right or wrong oh, okay. at this point for this one. Okay. But also, there's still that half, half a point up for grabs okay. on Hosono's pen. Oh, name. shit. <laughs> <laughs> All I care about is Alexander Nevermind. <laughs> Who are some of the newer artists, both in Japan and overseas, that you're into right now? Um, and kind of as a second to that, mm -hmm. like, um, are are there any artists that you would want to see do this and do a cover of an alpha specifically? Oh shoot! I mean, there's so many people I would love to see do a Jun Togawa song. Mm -hmm. I mean. I, because I think that it's like appropriate for the time. Like I think that people are into that kind of music, mm -hmm. and I, like, you know, even just like from the bands that we play with, uh, with Yeah Baby, because we play a lot of like lo like clubs in the Lower East Side and stuff, and you mm -hmm. just see like all these younger people, and just like the the temperament of music now in general, I feel like, at least in New York or whatever, would be perfect for her stuff. Mm. I would love. I mean, I I thought about it actually for myself, but I was like, this is too intense for me. <laughs> <laughs> I needed something kinder. Um, right. What was the rest of the question? Just stuff that I'm into? Uh, yeah, younger younger artists that like you're into these days oh, as I well see, as if there's anyone that I you feel like, I feel like I get so overwhelmed by stuff, um, by, like by how much kind of music there is now, mm. uh, that it, it does like, my sort of bandwidth for listening kind of hits like a critical point and it just kind of goes back to like these. Right. <laughs> and it just default. Um, I, it's not, like I, like I just said, I just did an interview about Mersbo. So <laughs> it's like, for some reason that's like, that would be the point that I would point to. But I, I obviously, that's not for everybody. Um, but I think that, shoot, I don't know. Uh, my friend Takako Minakawa makes beautiful music mm. and she's still, I think she had a record that came out this year. Okay. Um, and everything she puts out I think is just absolutely beautiful she sang on my last record which is very sweet of her um, so all of her stuff is cool to me and and very sort of like listenable mm. uh, it's not like it's very like sort of calming and peaceful which I think for like the last two years is necessary right it's hard to listen to things that are like too intense these days I feel like just mm. because that, that's so funny, though, with the dichotomy of you saying that and then right. saying that Jun Togawa is... Right, and then saying Mersbo is the other point. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I think that there's, like, a commonality amongst music to begin with, like, and something that is, like, as severe as, like, as the, the harsh noise thing of Mersbo or something as, like, sweet as, like, the Yumi Matsutoi thing. I think that there is, like, a connection. And it's not just Japan. I mean, that would be, like, the easy thing to draw to. But I think that it's just again it comes down to sort of like an earnestness like mm. where people just like they know what they want to express or they're, they're trying to find something to express that thing so I, I don't know I, it's hard for me I, I have a hard time saying like specific things like mm -hmm. that because I think that everything is kind of valid in its sure. own way um, and if and music comes to people so I don't know listen, people listen to Mersbo and listen to Yumi Matsutoya and uh listen to every record that this label has released because everything is I mean it's it has value in some way or another be it historic or be it like as a way to sort of uh, resonate the importance of, of the other uh, other records in the catalog like it's just there's just so much stuff to get into so that's where I would point people I mean obviously if people are li watching this show right they probably have a, a, a context and awareness of what alpha is but if they haven't, that's where I would send people. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Anybody, honestly. Like <laughs> I, I, but that being, like what you just said, like I think it's, this is a cool opportunity for people to be able to do think, something that they normally wouldn't be able to do. I mean, there's no context in my person, like my career outside of this where I would ever be able to cover that song. Right. You know what I mean? So like being able to have the opportunity to do it, it's great because for me, this is sort of like a, this is like not a bucket list thing, but it's like, okay, like now I can, this music has meant so much to me and now I can like hopefully through being able to perform it 
express that mm. in, in, in whatever way I can, mm. you know what I mean? Which is, and hopefully people who watch this at home <laughs> enjoy the performance, because uh, I did. And I, I uh, And we did. Cool, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you should too. Yeah, but all this alpha stuff, it's just, it's like such a good time. I don't know, it just feels like a good time. Yeah. You know, Does yeah. It, it doesn't feel like depressing. <laughs> and I think it's a good, it's a good thing for people to get into. Right. You know? Totally. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your performance. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. Hi. Thanks for watching another episode of My Favorite Alpha. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please do like it and subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments how many times you saw the Cobalt Hour album cover. Also, check out our last guest, Ginger Roots, full episode right there and some more videos from My Favorite Alpha down here. See you soon.